What is up, my people? Welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to be talking about martial arts films. Right? And, I mean, we, we, don't, we don't talk about it too much anymore because I feel like martial arts films in general has have died. I mean... Like, what do we have now? Like, we have John Wick, which is kind of like a martial arts film, but not really. Um, it's more of a gun a gun movie mixed with a little bit of martial arts. Most martial arts films, they look the same. You know, like, everybody is trying to beat John Wick now. You know, the, the, the fight style of... Uh, movies, they all look the same, you know, it's the same choreographers, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, um, you know, directing the same, the same fight scenes, uh, and that used to not be the case, this is why I say martial arts films are, are dead, because back in the day, I mean, we had Steven Seagal with the, the Aikido stuff. We had um, Jean Claude Van Damme with his his high kicks and you know stuff like that. You had Jet Li with the speed and the and the accuracy and stuff like that. You had Jackie Chan with his whole you know stunts and and creativity. You know, so it, it was a lot more diverse. You know, it was a lot more. You had. You, you can watch different people for different reasons, right? And you had variety. You know, now we don't really have that variety anymore. We have just one way of doing it. And to be honest, I think I, I blame really the martial arts community because uh, it's the same thing in the martial arts community. Uh, everybody's worried about what's functional and, and does it really work in a real fight? You know, and martial arts for a long time wasn't about that. It was more about just, you know, because let's be honest, nobody's going to be fighting anybody. Like, not for real, for real. You could, maybe you'll spar somebody in, in, a, in a controlled setting, somewhere in a dojo or in your gym or whatever. You know, but you're not fighting, fighting. You're just, you know, sparring, right? So this whole functional thing is, is stupid to me because nobody's really going to be using any of that shit anyways. You know, so the main thing you should worry about is are you having fun? Are you exercising your body? And does it, does it make you feel good? That's it. I know that sounds um, lame and it doesn't sound as heroic or, or as cool as is it functional. But the fact of the matter is that we're not living in a society that... That um, you, you, you're gonna need to kick somebody in the face, or you're gonna need to know how to disarm some dude. We we don't live in that uh, world. We just don't. We don't. So now everything looks the same, right? Everything. All of these other martial arts were killed somewhere in the process, and now everybody just looks like robots. They all do the same thing. They all fight the same way. Um, and with the excuse that it's functional. Quote, unquote, functional. And the same thing is happening in films. The same thing is happening with the martial arts YouTubers. And, you know, we don't have anybody that says we're going to make it work. And that's the attitude they used to have in the 80s and then the 90s. We're going to make it work. Plain and simple. Nobody has that attitude. We're, everybody abandons their posts to go be zombies. And this is why, in my opinion, martial arts films are dead. Most martial arts films, most, most pure martial arts films go straight to DVD. You know, nobody gets like a really big, you know, cinematic um, uh, showing. Kind of like they used to back in the day when... When uh, martial arts films were on top, you know, um, 
yeah, they're no longer they're no longer on top anymore. Um, and uh, but I want to go back in time. I want to go back in time and talk a little bit about my personal picks for you know, the best films in in the martial arts world. You know, in the history of martial arts, uh, movie, film um, history. You know, what are my top picks? I did my part, pal. He's all yours. Hey, Pops, you're a little old for this, ain't you? Go, go, get the fight on. You know, and the one thing that I, the first thing that I'm going to mention today, you know, uh, as far as one of the elements that used to be in martial arts films that is no longer in martial arts films or in action films is the competition between two, um, uh, the competition between two actors, you know, like for example, the Arnold Schwarzenegger versus Sylvester Stallone competition. You know, the rivalry. The rivalry between them. Um, you know, was legendary, worldwide famous. Everybody knew about it. Everybody talked about it. They were always trying to one-up each other in the films. But the very first... The very first uh, rivalry was actually Charles Bronson uh, versus... Uh, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. It's always hard for me to say his name. I don't know why. Uh, but Clint Eastwood. Um, you know, there was a rivalry between Charles Bronson and, and, and Clint Eastwood. And personally, you know, I kind of like Clint Eastwood's films a little bit more. You know, except for the, the few exceptions from Charles Bronson. This is one of them. Uh, but that's one of the things we're missing now. You know, there used to be competitions between people, you know, uh, between these actors, these action films, you know, they used to one-up each other, you know, and then you got, later on in the 90s, you had, you know, Van Damme versus Steven Seagal, you know, they were constantly in competition with each other, and then we kind of lost that, you know, for a while, even Jackie Chan versus Jet Li, even though finally we got that to see them both in a, in a film, um, you know, fight each other. Uh, what was it called? The Forbidden Kingdom or something like that? So, you know, um, so that, that's, well, that's one of the things we're missing. Right now, I guess you could say an action star that we have is The Rock Johnson, but he really doesn't have any competition. And, you know, compared to the ones that we used to have in the past, he's not really up there, in my opinion. Um, but when it comes to like martial arts films, you know, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me having, you know, this movie in the list, uh, because martial arts isn't necessarily the main theme in a way, but to me it is, it, it shows a lot of elements of it, you know, there's, uh, kicks involved, there's punches involved, there's wrestling involved. Uh, very much like it used to be back in the day <clears throat> and you know the choreography isn't isn't so so great you know I will say that the choreography isn't like the best right so that's why it's so low on the list that's why it's my first pick you know, this is my number six for a reason um, but it, it does show kind of like what goes on in, uh, in boxing today to where you have, you know, a promoter who's trying to promote a guy, but he's really just trying to make money. It's not really about the fights. It's about the the whole stuff that goes on behind the scenes, trying to make a fight happen, trying to make a deal happen, you know, and all of that stuff, all of the corruption, you know, that actually goes on in boxing to this day, you know, believe it or not, um, but yeah, 
the movie is called Hard Times with Charles Bronson. I definitely recommend it. You know, there's a lot of realistic, realistic martial arts in here, but it's not definite. It's not necessarily entertaining. You know, in the sense that, you know, they're they're very slow. You know, they're very slow moving. They're they This is before Bruce Lee, I believe. So they're not really. They're not really showing us anything crazy to where you're like, damn, this guy's showing showing us some great moves or whatever. But they definitely work. I mean, if you hit somebody in the balls or in the chin, in the yeah, in, in, in the leg, it's gonna hurt. So, um, <clears throat> moving on to my number five is the street fight. Underrated actor, Mr. Sony Chiba. Um, you know, Sony Chiba is one of these one of these actors. Like I said, not very many people know him. Some people would look at him and say, "Oh, is that Bruce Lee or something?" Because you know, they can't tell the difference. But in my opinion, Sony Chiba is you know one of the great martial arts actors that ever. Um, did it, you know, and The Street Fighter is, in my opinion, his his best film, I haven't really seen any of the other ones, but, you know, the reason I like this movie so much is, like, first of all, the soundtrack, right, the opening scene and the soundtrack is top-notch, right, um, it, it has, like, a, kind of like a, um, like a disco thing going on in the, in the music, right, Number two, I like Sony Shiba. Sony Shiba, you know, the faces he makes are crazy. You know, he makes these weird, you know, faces um, similar to Bruce Lee, but he, his are... <laughs> the movie revels in violence, you know, it, it, it like, you know, it really likes the violence. It's a little gory as well, but it's like... It's old school gore, you know. It's it, it's practical effects. Uh, I don't know if I can get, if I get in trouble with this, but you know, I'm just gonna show that really quick, and that that'll, that'll kind of show you, you know, practical effects back in the '70s and the '80s. You know, there's something endearing about those types of effects, those types of special effects that you know aren't necessarily done with a lot of technology like we have uh, nowadays, but. You know, it's pretty cool. When it comes to choreography, I love the choreography. You know, a lot of people might not like it because it's not at the level of, like, you know, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Donnie Yen, you know, these guys, Tony Ja. You know, obviously, these guys take it to the next level and do things that are way more incredible. But, you know, if I, if I had to differentiate between Hard Times and... You know this movie I would give this this movie uh, the Street Fighter I would give it like a um, uh, I would give it like a eight yeah, I would give it like an eight eight out of ten and our times would be like a four as, as far as choreography goes so that that should give you like an idea you know of where this movie falls when it comes to choreography, um, <clears throat> but as far as what the movie's about, you know, the protagonist is a what they call a half breed, right? Which is it, the movie. It kind of touches a little bit on racism and on World War Two, how you know the Japanese hated the Chinese or whatever, and the Chinese, you know, vice versa, hated the Japanese, and. The main character, the main protagonist of the story, <clears throat> he's a mixed uh, man, a, a mixed person, uh, Japanese and Chinese, and because of that, he felt ostracized. <clears throat> he felt ostracized by society, and um, you know, he felt like you know the odd man out. And because of this, he kind of you know the character, he's a rebel. 
you know, he, he doesn't believe in, you know, being loyal to any martial arts school. He doesn't believe in, you know, um, belts even. You know, he doesn't believe in uh, uh, any kind of structure. You know, he goes against... Oxygen coma. <laughs> that means you're a Diaco school member. I owe nothing to any school. When, uh, uh, any kind of structure, you know, he goes against the grain. He doesn't even believe in good guys and bad guys. He's he himself. He's not even a good guy or a bad guy. He's just a guy doing the job, and he does a lot of things that are questionable in the movie. Things that you know, a hero doesn't do. Um. So the movie's called The Street Fighter. So basically it, it's about him just going against the grain and not necessarily um, um, subscribing to any of the beliefs or... Um, and that's why I like the movie because it's not like, okay, he's a good guy and he's going against the bad guys. Or he's a bad guy and he's going against the good guys. The guy, is, he's just him. And since an early age, he was, like I, like I said, he was considered a mutt. And because of this, he hates everybody. So, an honorable mention that didn't make the list is the Karate Kid movies. A lot of people are going to hate me for not including these uh, movies. Um, you know, because the, the, uh, the Karate Kid is one of the, the most famous martial arts films ever. And... You know, some people have even got it at number one as the best, right? Um, and I get it, you know, it, it has um, a good story, right? Not that complicated. It has a good plot, right? Um, and it has a good message, right, to, to, to continue to push forward. Um, I mean, it's, the message is even in the song, if, if, you, if you listen to the song. Um, to continue to to try to be the best, and it's really like a sports film. Um, as far as choreography goes, you know this movie is not like the best, um, but it is, you know, it is up there, right? But it's not like, like I said, it's not like one of the best. Um, so yeah, honorable mention, and also I have to give another honorable mention to its. Uh, remix or it's, it's re appearance or remixing I guess of the movie which is uh, The Karate Kid with Jackie Chan and uh, Janet Smith I know a lot of people are going to hate this because um, a lot of old heads especially they're going to be like no you know the original is better or whatever and I get it I totally understand why you would feel that way why you would feel some type of way about that um, but you gotta give it up for Jackie Chan, dude. Jackie Chan, one of the best that ever made it, one of the best that ever did it. I mean, and um, you know his choreography, his skills in choreography is undeniable. He still got it, you know. Um, Jaden Smith, you know, underrated, in my opinion, especially in this movie. I mean, he learned how to do the splits. He learned kung fu. He, he's doing his own stunts, you know, of course, after he fell out, after this movie, he didn't continue, I don't know why, um, but, you know, it was to the point where Jackie Chan himself was like, man, this guy, if he continues, he's going to be the best, right, so, underrated in my opinion, of course, it has his problems, but we're not going to get into that, it's just an honorable mention, let's continue to... I... Number four, Rocky Four. Rocky Four is my number four, guys. Um, and in my opinion, it's the best uh, out of the Rocky series. Rocky Four is the best, in my opinion. Um, better than Rocky Three, even. I know a lot of people prefer Rocky Three. Um, <clears throat> they all have all the way to four. You know, they all have their good elements, right? And they're the good storyline and the good plot and the good main premise of the movie. You know, they have a reason for existing. 
uh, after four, you know, it's kind of like, you know, not really. And, like, for example, number one is, is about having a chance and the underdog taking it to the limit and, you know, pushing himself to, to make it, right? And number two is about, you know, people thinking that, oh, he got lucky that first time. He's not really going to do it again. You know, go back to being a bum. And he pushes it and he makes it. Number number three is about fame and about how fame gets to people and changes people and makes people weak sometimes and makes people, you know, not so, not so great anymore. And uh, number four is about pushing himself to the limit pushing himself to, even though people don't care about him, he's still going to push himself to the limit. They don't care about him or his friend in the movie, and, and, and you know, that's what I like about this, all of these films, um, because it shows pretty much the life of an actor and uh, the things uh, an actor has to go through in the film industry um, in a way to where... You know, they have to make it, and then they have to remake it again. They have to make another good movie, right? And then after making another good movie, he has to face fame because fame is going to get in the way and it's going to change you and it's going to change everybody around you. And then after that, you realize that nobody really cares about you as long as you're, you're, you're producing good movies. And if you don't continue to produce good movies and even uh, push yourself to the limits, nobody's going to care about you. And... If you look at this movie, and one of the one of the craziest scenes in the movie, it kind of shows what I'm talking about, is when Apollo Creed dies, and nobody cares, dude. Nobody cares about. Nobody get up back down there. There is no movement by Creed. Cause they lay down the. I just need all that. It's an anthem. Get out of here. No, it's absolute pandemonium. Come stand back. Feel unreasonable. You can do it. Do it. And you be the real champion. Where's the stretcher? Somebody's... Because he's not boxing anymore. Because he's not relevant anymore. He's not producing good films anymore. So they kind of toss him aside and look at the new big deal, which is, in this case, Drago. And everybody's looking at him, putting the camera at him. And Drago's like, yeah, yeah I'm better than this guy. And he's like, oh, I defeat all men. Uh, you know, I defeat real champions. And then they're like, yo, do you care about this guy that you just killed? And he's like, nah, if he dies, he dies. You know, and meanwhile, Sylvester Stallone, uh, you know, Rocky Balboa, is like, yo, my friend, you know, like, somebody come help my friend, somebody get a doctor, nobody gives a shit about your friend. <laughs> and that's what he was trying to portray in that moment. That nobody really cared about him as an actor or as a human being, actually, unless he was producing these big blockbuster films. You know, and he felt like he was pressured to push himself, even though he kind of wanted to quit. You know, he told Apollo in the movie, he was like, we're not built that way anymore. We're not like that anymore. We're getting old. We're starting to become, uh, you know, irrelevant. And, you know, Apollo tells him, dude, if we're not going to continue to do this, then we might as well be dead. You know, we might as well be dead. And so he... That's what the movie was about. That's the main premise of the movie. So, in my opinion, that's what makes this, this movie so great. The soundtrack is one of the best soundtracks in this list. Uh, if not the best, I would say it's, it's, it's the best. You know, it's, it's, it's the best. It's, uh, 10 stars out of 10. Um, it doesn't get any better than this soundtrack. Um, you know, when it comes to the choreography, I would give it like a 5, maybe a 6. You know, because it's not that great, but it does have feelings in it. It, 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 it. It's all about the feelings behind the punches. You know, they throw punches with feelings and with with emotion and energy. You know, and that in itself, you know, makes the movie or the choreography, actually, the choreography is what I meant, uh, worth uh, watching. You know, oh. Uh, so yeah, that that's that's Rocky Four, and now we got to move on to my number three pick. Four of you guys can't beat one. <laughs> my number.
number three pick, which is none other than Jackie Chan's drunken master, the legend of the drunken master. Now, a lot of people, I don't know if Jackie Chan invented the drunken fist. I'm not sure. I think they have uh, scrolls of the invention, the drunken fist. But I don't. I, I've never seen anybody actually use it except for Jackie Chan. So who knows? But the point is, you know, Jackie Chan. You know, he's a master of of the drunken fist. At least from my point of view, um, the guy is is a master of, of filmmaking, a master of choreography, a master of stunts. You know, it doesn't get any better than Jackie Chan. You know, as far as the the soundtrack goes, it's pretty good, it's not bad, um, the music does keep it going, I, I really do like the, the soundtrack as well, um, the choreography, I mean, it's Jackie Chan, bro, I mean, of course, of course the choreography is gonna be great in this one, um, you know, and as far as the lesson goes, or, or the plot of the movie, it's pretty much, um, the workers fighting against the big bosses or whatever, and trying to, trying to, you know, bosses are trying to take over or something like that. I forgot, I forgot really what it was about. But I remember the message of the movie for me personally was that sometimes you just got to be yourself. You know, sometimes you just got to be yourself. Even if yourself is a little bad, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad person. Um, like, for example, this guy, Jackie Chan's character... Um, he's, he's a drunk, but he likes to get drunk and, you know, fight. And, um, that's his his style, his drunken master style, right? And he feels bad because his father says that he's a drunk or whatever, and it's embarrassing to see him, you know, drunk, and, and that it's a bad style because you can get addicted to alcohol, and most of them... Most of the drunken masters, you know, they die because of that. And so his father, you know, he's not proud of it. And his mom, you know, she she's, you know, kind of, you know, indifferent about it because she's a drunk herself. And so he's ashamed, you know. Uh, Jackie Chan's character is ashamed of, of doing this the style and drinking as much as he does. But he just can't stay away from it because the only way to fight the bad guys is to be a little bad yourself. And so that's what the movie is about. Send a maniac to catch one. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much the message. The message of, of the movie: you could have an addiction, but it doesn't mean you're a bad guy. You know, there's there. Sometimes you need to do it too to beat the bad guy. So, so that's pretty much uh, the movie. Let's move on here to. Oh, by the way, there's there's a awesome scene I forgot to mention where he beats up a bunch of. Uh, Axe man, uh, I mean, axe gang guys, and there's like a hundred of them or more. And he improvises a weapon with like bamboo sticks or a bamboo stick and uh, alcohol. He pours it all over his body and he just starts cutting up all of these axe men. It's, it's brutal. Um, so yeah, Jackie Chan is, is, is crazy. And that's what I like about Jackie Chan, he's like the most creative choreographer ever, you know, most of the guys, like, especially nowadays, they don't have this anymore, you're just, everybody's doing the same shit, you know, everybody's Jason Bourne slash, um, uh, John Wick, you know, so, um, uh, another one, you know, another good movie, you know, honorable mention is Fearless, Fearless is a movie with Jet Li, you know, choreography, of course, is going to be great with Jet Li. Very accurate, very fast. Um, you know, when it comes to the story, it, the story is about, you know, vengeance and, and, and the things that it does to people. Um, it reminds me a lot of the YouTubers nowadays where they're all fighting about what style is best. And, you know, this is functional, that's not functional, that would never work in a fight, this would work in a fight, or whatever. And it's a never-ending story of, you know, whose style is the best. And, and this this has been going on since forever, like I said before. And people would actually die 
uh, because of it. And this movie is about, you know, vengeance is bad and it's a never ending story and you're never going to end. It's never going to end well for you and it's never going to end, period. So it's better to just leave it alone and don't seek vengeance. That's what the, the movie's about. Um, this other one uh, it's called Unleashed. It's also a good movie. Um, it's about you know, the scars of life and how you can start all over again and forget the past, pretty much. Uh, Tony Ja, in my opinion, you know, honorable mention as well. Um, in the in, in the movie Anbach, you know, <clears throat> choreography is probably you know eleven out of ten, dude. But other than that, the movie doesn't have really much anything else to offer. It's just a you know a, a chance to to see Tony Ja do his best stunts. And, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much, the movie is just, you know, it's just them setting up the obstacles that he knows how to do, and he goes through and does it with his team, and, you know, um, Tony John, in my opinion, was the last martial arts hero, right, um, and <clears throat> um, after him, you know, there was really... There really no other martial arts film that I remember ever hit the big screen at all anymore. You know, that was the last one I saw at, in the movies was was uh, Amba. And, um, and and the thing about it is, when I was there, there was only like what, like four people in there watching the movie. <laughs> so there you go. The soundtrack's really good. Uh, but yeah, honorable mention. Another honorable mention. You know, anything with, with Nani Yen, you know, is, is going to be good. But Ip Man, you know, of course, it's one of these martial arts films that, that actually didn't get to the big screen. But it's not an American film. Um, it's, a, it's a Chinese film that, you know, made it in the U.S. I don't know if Ip Man was in theaters. I don't think it was. But I know Ip Man 4 was. Um this movie, I actually, I actually rented it out um, a long time ago, back when Blockbuster was on its way out. Um, but I don't think it was uh, in movie theaters. But it's a good movie. Um, it's about how war changes people and it brings out the worst in people, um, and how you gotta just try to continue to to be good in your art. So it's it's pretty much like the pianist meets. Uh, a martial artist. It's like if the pianist was a martial artist. If you've seen the movie The Pianist, it's kind of the same thing. Um, but with martial arts. Flashpoint, another um, you know, Donnie Yen movie. Check it out. Pretty good. It has some of the best uh, you know, choreography as far as modern, what what, the, what a modern choreographer should do. Um, in my opinion. You know, Kung Fu Killer, it's pretty much like if if Hannibal Lecter was a martial artist, pretty much, and and he had to go catch Buffalo Bill, who's also a martial artist. Uh, but in at number two, in at number two is Blood. Sp- two things that keep it together, the story, the plot, and, you know, the acting of Jean-Claude Van Damme. Now, as far as the choreography go, this is where I personally am going to disagree with a lot of people. People think that Jean-Claude Van Damme is a great choreographer. I do not think that. I think that he has one gimmick, and he made his whole career on that, which is his kicks and his splits. Now, he could do his splits, and he could do a cool kick in the air. That, that a lot of people can't do, right? And at the right angle, you catch him at the right angle and he looks like he's flying with his legs, right? And I get it. 
But that's the only thing he does in, in any of his movies. He, he's not like Jackie Chan where he's constantly coming up with new creative ways to wow us. You know, or like Jet Li where he's he's super fast and he comes up with these crazy, you know, accurate moves um, to wow us as well. You know, John claude Van Damme is doing the same thing in every movie. You know, so as far as choreography goes, in my personal opinion, I give this one like a five, maybe. Maybe a six. Um, but to be honest, Bruce Lee's better. Like, he's older, but he's better. Uh, even, even, um, your boy, uh, Sony Shiba, you know, has, has better, um, choreography. So, but, you know, it has one of the best scenes in this movie, Bloodsport. You have one of the, the best scenes in cinema history, which is when he goes blind, and in my personal opinion, of course. of the movie is very clear it's like if you have a goal in mind yeah you got to train you got to do everything and you got to try your best but sometimes you're going to get an unexpected thing that gets in the way and when that happens just remember to breathe and remember your training and push through so it's about it's a sports movie pretty much a blood sports movie honorable mention is kickboxer uh, Kickboxer is, is 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 a good movie, but I think it's secondary to Bloodsport because it's just a vengeance movie, you know, vengeance martial arts films. Um, in my opinion, are good, but if it doesn't have that much of a of a good uh, message behind it, I don't really mention them too much, you know, because even though it, it could be like really good. Um, like for example this movie Kickboxer one of my favorite Van Damme movies it's not really showing us anything that, that crazy in my opinion um, and of course he does his, his famous kick you know that everybody likes um, so that's that too but in at number one of course we have to mention the king of martial arts action movies um and the best martial arts movie ever made, in my opinion, which is... Oh, don't hit back. Enter the Dragon. And this movie has everything I've mentioned right there. The best movie, the best martial arts movie should have. Number one... Uh, it's a good plot, you know, it's not that complicated, but it's kind of like mixing, you know, a James Bond movie with a martial arts movie. Um, number two, uh, it has a good message, it has a ton of good messages. Of course, Ven what is the highest technique you hope to achieve? To have no technique, very good. What are your thoughts when facing an opponent? There is no opponent, and why is that? Because the word I does not exist you know a whole bunch of quotable things that you could talk about within the movie that that overshine the plot of the movie which is just vengeance um and the other thing you know that this movie has is a good soundtrack you know it's not the best but it is a very good soundtrack uh very recognizable you hear it you know what you're what you're watching um, the opening scene, you hear that, you hear that, 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 that score, and you're like, yeah, this is Enter the Dragon. Um, choreography, I mean, it's Bruce Lee, bro. He changed the game. You know, to the day, till today, I still think it's some of the most realistic, um, you know, fight scenes. A lot of people might disagree with me, but I do believe that, that it is, uh, my personal opinion. And, um, you know, as far as, like, acting, I mean, Bruce Lee, he, he, he invented the, the weird faces, the, the weird crazy faces that he does, um, as far as actors go, there's a lot of good actors in this movie, um, and 
the one thing I forgot to mention is it has a very good antagonist, which is something that's also missing in a lot of these recent martial arts uh, films. You know, a good antagonist. So let's talk about it. What are the things that make a good martial arts film? Number one, I would say the message, right? Number two, the choreography. Number three, um, uh, the, the faces. We have to have weird faces in martial arts movies. We have to bring that back, right? Van Damme was still doing it, right? Van Damme, very good faces. Um, Sony Shiva, extraordinary faces. You know, Jackie Chan, I mean, he he, he has all the faces, right? Uh, and Bruce Lee, the king of the guy who started the faces, right? So, what I'm trying to say is we need to bring that back. Okay, so, so okay, the, the choreography, the message, the faces... The main, the, the special moves, you know, I forgot to mention that. So it's something that Karate Kid did good that all of the other films didn't do that good. It was the emphasis and the importance of the main move or the special move, you know, which is something that is lost a lot of times in, in a lot of these movies. Um, and, and both of them have it, like the remake and the the uh, the old one. And the soundtrack. You know, last but not least, the soundtrack. All of these movies that I have in my list have great soundtracks. You know, with the exception of maybe the exception of the with the exception of maybe Hard Times. And it's not even a bad soundtrack. It's just not as as good as uh, as some of these others. But yeah, this movie has it all, guys. Um, you know, and if it wasn't for for this movie, you know, making it. Uh, we wouldn't have, you know, all of the martial arts films that we do today. You know, this was the one that made it through, that broke through Hollywood. Um, and, of course, we did have martial arts films in China and in other places, but they were never mainstream. You know, they were never like, you know, the thing to look at until Bruce Lee made this movie. Of course, he, he had tried before. Nobody wanted him. He went back to China, made the big boss. Um, you know, Bruce Lee mixed, uh, you know, Western punches with Chinese uh, martial arts and Japanese posing, right? So if you look at, you know, the way China, the Chinese would make films, they would just, hoo, hoo, ha, he, hoo, hoo, ha, right? And the, the 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 fight would end when it was over, right? But in Japanese films, they would like pose, like they would like slice somebody up and go ah, and then they would scream, you know, which is similar to the martial arts. Each martial arts is, is the same, right? When when a Chinese kung fu guy does his katas, he starts and he continues to flow through it until it ends. And the Japanese karate guy, every time he does a special move, he emphasizes it with a scream and a weird face. And that's what Bruce Lee did. He brought that from Japanese cinema, mixed it with Chinese cinema, and showed you some Chinese, I mean, some some American boxing. And he mixed all of these worlds together, you know, to, to create his own way of making movies. Um, so, yeah, he revolutionized the music, in, I mean, not the music industry, the the, uh, the film industry. He made it possible for all of the martial artists to, to have a, a way of living, you know, separate from just beating each other up. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so, there you go. Uh, one of the funny, one of the funny um, parts of the movie, though, is like, all the faces involved, right? But there was one funny face uh, when Bolo Young gets gets hit in the uh, in the balls. <laughs> and face. And I, I didn't know if he was uh, coming or dying or I don't know what the fuck that was. Or maybe he came and then he died, which is not a bad way to go if you think about it. Uh, <laughs> but.
but yeah, that, that was that was that was a fucking bit in, in, in the movie. Um, but yeah, it's a great movie all around. Like I said, it has its funny moments. Um, it has its um, you know, kind of sad moments and and harsh moments, I guess you could say. Um, and I think it was rated R for sure. So, so there you go. 